Welcome back. This is the 18th video in the Flow Certified Professional online training series. This is Anticipatory Vision Part A. And in this section, we're going to talk primarily about the STACY diagram. So that's for the individual and team boxes. And then in the, in the Part B, we're going to talk about the anticipatory vision as you see in this picture here. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next video a lot more. So I know that a lot of you have used either the Stacy diagram or the Kinevin. It's, it's a, uh, I think a Scottish word and uh, uh, anyways, uh, Kinevin, I always want to say Cinefin, but it's Kinevin. It's the European version of Stacy, and it's I like the uh, Kinevin diagram because it helps me to show the overlap between agilists and management consultants. If you're not led by vision, you're going to be driven by circumstance. And especially in times like these, with what got thrown at us with coronavirus, vision becomes even more important because now there are circumstances that have been driving everybody all over the place. It's been like a, a hurricane that has hit every business on the planet. This is the Stacy diagram. This is what I was taught in Scrum <laughs> by my uh, certified Scrum trainer about uh, 14, 15 years ago. And it was taking a, a look at, uh, is the technology unknown or is the technology known? And are the requirements stable or are the requirements uh, unstable or unknown? Okay. And if you had unstable requirements and unknown technology, that was out with chaos and anarchy out here in the upper right corner. And then you would work your way down into complex and then down to complicated and then eventually to simple. And just as a side note, and we'll probably talk about this again, uh, management consultants have been working on uh, taking extremely chaotic, complex, and complicated things and bringing it down to the simple. That's their bread and butter. You talk about best practices and things like that. We're going to talk about that when we get into the uh, Kinevin diagram. Uh, Stacy did this diagram uh, in the early 90s, if I remember correctly. Now, a lot of times you'll say, hey, the technology is simple. And the requirements are known. But... If you end up with complex communications, so it becomes almost a 3D, three-dimensional graph. If your communications are complex due to either multiple internal or external partners, now all of a sudden you need to start looking at the Stacy diagram in a new way because it's not as straightforward or as simple as you think, okay? Because... Uh, a lot of times the Agilists will say, oh, if it's complex or complicated, then we need to be using uh, Agile for these and even for chaos and anarchy. But if it's simple, well, we can just, you can use waterfall or a napkin or whatever you want to do to track your work. But the reality is, is that it gets a lot more complicated than that. And uh, many thanks to Robert Schiff, who's a uh, Flow Certified Trainer Internal and uh, a Flow Certified Professional and so on, with a lot of certifications as well, uh, for sharing this concept. Uh, he caught on to this very quickly, and I just thought that this was utterly brilliant of him to think about this three-dimensionally and say, well, hey, wait a second, it's just not technology or requirements, it's also the communications. When you factor that in, you could make a mistake just using the flat Stacy diagram and say, well, it was easy requirements and easy technology, it's a no-brainer. But because of the complexity of the communications, it wasn't. 
It was extremely complex. It was not straightforward. And it literally had brought a team to a screeching halt for almost a year. They couldn't move forward because of this. So it's really important to understand this. This is really important. We're going to look at the same thing, but we're going to look at this from the Kinevin framework. And what I like about the Kinevin framework is, is that they put in the practices that you need for each box. And uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I asked somebody once in Scotland, hey, has uh, Dave Snowden ever told us what the difference is between chaos and disorder? He goes, yeah. Somebody asked that question at one of the safe gatherings there. And four hours later, we still weren't sure. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, I'm not sure it's worth a four-hour di discussion to do the semantic differences between disorder and chaos. To me, they're the same. So I don't know what the value add is of having disorder. But what I do like is this, uh, the practices that are included, plus this cliff right here. This is like, think about it like uneven. Think about it three-dimensional. It's extremely easy for an organization to fall off the cliff, cliff from best practice into chaos. You know, you spend a lot of money on us, management consultants who come in, and uh, all of a sudden, what had been working no longer works. I was brought in on an agile reboot for an organization and they had been taught best agile practices and they were able to deliver. Their throughput was fantastic. They had really good teams. Problem was is that they hadn't really factored in the vision and, and really sorted through those value adds. And so they had actually gone from back, best practice back into chaos at the team level because of lack of vision and lack of discipline. And so agile is easy, but it's not, it's, it's, it's uh, well, I should say agile is simple. It's not easy. And it requires a higher level of discipline than if you're going to just use old-fashioned traditional waterfall. Okay, And so these practices for each of these areas. And as I mentioned earlier, every management consultant on the planet knows if it's chaos, you're going to use ad hoc whatever it takes to fix you know, whatever is on fire. If you have a fire up on the deck of the boat, you're going to find the fire hoses and try to put out the fire. You're not going to have, you're going to act, sense, and respond. Okay. If it's complex, and you're going to use emerging practice. Okay. And so you want to use, you know, what are these emerging practices like Agile that are going to help us solve these complex issues and problems? And then as you get into the complicated, you're going to look at, okay, we've, we've done the emerging practice, and now we're sorting out which one of these are good. Okay, so you've got some good practice to deal with complicated problems. But all of these distill finally down into simple what's best practice. And so a lot of people will say, you know, well, not a lot, but I've heard agilists say, oh, you need to fight complexity with complexity. And it's like, mm, no, that's not how a management consultant would think. We would go, hey, you got to follow, follow the path here and, and go from emergent to good to best and find that best practice. And that will, that's how you defeat complexity or leverage complexity, however you want to look at it. Um, the way you, you're going to get the most value <laughs> out of the complexity is to break it down to best practice. And again, uh, this is the uh, Kinevin diagram. The minute you can end up with, hey, both the uh, technology and the requirements are simple, so let's just use best practice. And then it's very easy to miss that the communications are complex 
and all of a sudden you're going, hmm, <laughs> this is no longer uh, a project that should be using traditional waterfall. We should have been using Agile, Scrum, Kanban, XP, whatever is needed to get the work done here instead of making the uh, assumption that because of, of both of those requirements in tech were simple, uh, that will kill you. And so, again, thanks to Robert Schiff for bringing this up. The, it was just spot on and <laughs> absolutely correct. The other reason I like the Kinevin is because it's easy for me to show who works where. The management consultants, they work in all four areas, and so do the Agilists. But the Agilists have set their stake down in the complex and complicated areas. They've put their stake in the ground, and it's like, that's our area. And the management consultants are going, that's great. We're still going to work with all, all four, but they're primarily trying to distill everything down into best practice, and companies pay a lot of money to the management consultants for doing that. And the other way that the management consultants beat the Agilists is that they're working in that organization box all the time, in that organization lens, and also in the product program process lens area. When they're working on those two on the right, and the guys on the left are the Agilists working in the team, you start to go, hmm, all right. So if you're an Agilist that aspires to working in the uh, product program portfolio executive organization side you need to be prepared to speak other languages and you need to start to look at hey what do the management consultants do in order to succeed does that make sense so i forgot to mention at the end of the last video that we were one third complete 33 percent maybe you saw that at the end of this video, we're now 35% of the way done. Woo woo. <laughs> so good job. Keep hanging in there. Uh, now, the thing to remember with both Stacy and Kinevin, it can be a lot more complex than you think. And there's a lot more dimensions than just technology and requirements in getting your work done. Communication is 90% of everything that you do. So if you've got complex communication, better not be using traditional waterfall to try to uh, get that work done. Uh, again, Kinevin is the European version of Stacy. Uh, Dave Snowden did his diagram for the Kinevin framework in the end of the 90s, so it came many years after. Both are good, and I sort of like Kinevin a little bit better. Uh, that's probably the Finnish half of me speaking. And uh, especially because it shows the different practices uh, that you need to go from novel to emergent to good to best practice and things like that. And then it's really good at showing the overlap. And I like the cliff <laughs> when you fall off from simple best practice into chaos and, oh my gosh, we're all going to die type of thinking So for the organization. So the application is... is you, you got to look at this as which part of the quadrant of the Stacy or Kinevin diagram is your team? Where are they currently living? And what steps do you need to take to simplify it? And that's the whole idea of distillation is distilling it down from, you know, oh my goodness, we got to, you know, we got to do things up here like this. How do you get it down to best practice? Because in the end, that's the highest value add that companies are willing to pay for.